let's outline this icon. You can see that we've got um, a phone with two different vector shapes. I'm just going to highlight everything and use Command Option O. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the worst. I hate it when this happens. You hate it when this happens. There is a fix though, and I'm going to start completely from scratch to show you how we can fix this. Um, I'm using feather icons in this example. We've got phone and phone off. I wanted to show you those shapes because they kind of have uh, some different things about them, right? Phone off very much has multiple shapes going on, right? We've got this top part of the phone. Let me turn these white so you can see what's going on. We've got this top part, there's a gap. We've got a line that even in the layers panel is already separated, separated out and then this other half of the phone down here, but they're kind of attached in the layers panel at least. But this path, this phone is a closed shape, right? It just, you know, it goes around and on forever. It's one single path and uh, the start and the end connect. So if we are experiencing this dilemma with these, how do you fix it? What do you do? You can't just use a different icon library. It's not gonna match. How do we fix these? One method that I wanna show you is how we can break down both of these shapes into even simpler shapes, outline those, and then recombine them. So let's start with phone off. What I recommend doing is keeping an unadulterated copy, right? I mean, I have changed the color because I like dark mode and this helps me see what I'm doing better, but keep this on hand. This is kind of your, um, uh, how, how do we, uh, harvesting uh, node, harvesting icon, right? And then this one down here, this is going to be the one that you turn into a component and you add to your library. So let's first start by outlining the simplest and already separated out vector shape here, right? We've got the line. So let's just do command option O. And that did not crack. Not when that's not the part that's misbehaving. It's these other parts, right? If we try now to do that same thing here, this part below is misbehaving, this second half of the phone, I, but it's this where the problem is. Uh, so let's undo a couple times to get these back. What I'm going to do is double click on the vector path to enter this kind of path editing state and then highlight all the nodes up here, being careful to avoid this one. And I'm going to use command X to cut that to my clipboard. Then I'm going to exit the path editing, select the parent frame, and paste this back in and it pastes in place because where I copied it from part of the information that comes along with that is the XY coordinates of whatever I selected. And so because the dimensions are the same, the XY coordinates are the same, Figma knows to put those nodes back exactly where they were before. So that's really great because then I don't have to worry about that. And since this is a separate layer now, we can outline this. Okay. So we're most of the way there. So now this piece, we could, again, keep trying and seeing it if with every change, are we taking away enough information? Are we simplifying this enough to not get cracks? In this case, no, we need to break this down even further, but kind of like the other phone, this looks like it's a closed shape. I mean, these two nodes aren't connected, but okay, yeah, so not quite a closed shape. What I'm looking for here are easy ways where this can be cut. And I actually see if I draw a lasso here, this is a pretty easy cut for me to make. So I'm gonna grab that, cut it to my clipboard. This is where the harvesting comes in. You can see that even though I wanted to just grab this section, I also lost the path between these two nodes and these two nodes, right? So again, I'm gonna cut those nodes to my clipboard you'll see it'll be even more clear when I paste this back in, I've lost this information. I am not going to try and pretend that I can perfectly draw with the pen tool and then get the curve just right. No, no, no. I am not an icon designer. I'm not going to do that. This is where the harvesting icon comes in. You can grab that missing information from here, but instead of cutting, right, we're just going to copy because we want to preserve this. We want this to stay clean. And then we can paste that extra piece in here. So now I have this piece that I can outline and I have this piece that I can outline. That worked pretty well. Maybe this piece is simple enough. Nope, okay, still getting cracks. So let's see, let's grab these top three, cut. And you can see that I lost more than I bargained for there. So I will outline that. That was successful, but I do need this missing gap. 
So again, I'm going to go up to my harvesting icon, grab that gap, copy it to my clipboard, paste it in, outline it. That did the trick. And then I have this final piece, outline that. And so what I end up with here is a bunch of smaller shapes, right? Oh, and I'm missing a gap again. This is, and again, you want to keep your harvesting icon around until you are done done with this. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I pasted the whole thing in. Let's make sure we're grabbing the nodes. Copy. Zoomed out way too far. Okay. Okay. Outline. So now what I have is a bunch of paths, right? From here, you might be interested in flattening this, command E, to just collapse everything into a single layer, you could do that. You could also turn this into a union. That does work. It actually works. I will cover that separately somewhere else, my blog, a video, probably both. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to flatten these. What you get is something like this, where you can still see those endpoints of those separate shapes that we made. If this bothers you, there's probably a plugin out there that you could use to simplify the vector paths. It'll recognize where there's overlap and it'll just eliminate and reconfigure things, redraw things. So that way you still get your shape, but it's with less nodes. I would feel comfortable using this in a design system though, especially for like an early version. You could always go in later and clean this stuff up. So that same technique can be used for closed shapes too. It's the exact same concept, right? Again, this is our harvesting, node harvesting icon. This one, we could turn that into a component. That one is ready to go, ready for use. And the same deal. When we try and outline this, it gets crazy. So we just go into the vector path and we start chunking it up. You can start with really big chunks like this, and then the icon might decide to tell you where your next chunk is going to be. Like, I need this path. Paste that in, outline that, outline that. That worked beautifully. What am I missing? This kind of middle section that mirrors it. Yeah, so it's going to be this node and this node. Outline that. Oh, did not mean to open developer tools. And let's see if that was enough. Let's outline this. No, that still gets crazy. Okay, so let's split this. I'm just looking at wherever there's a really big gap and it's easy for me to draw a lasso. That's the only way I'm making decisions on where I want to draw um, that stuff. Okay, that worked pretty well. Let's grab this little section, outline that, and does this now behave? That behaves. All right, cool. And again, I think the bigger chunks help because then you get fewer of these overlapping areas. So you don't want to start too small with chunking it out. Um, Again, only if these little overlaps bother you. I don't think it should be that problematic. It is more information, but I, I think it's negligible. Um, if you're worried about file memory, you might be concerned about node count in your icons, perhaps. But I think at that point, if you're looking at node count to reduce your memory, like I would get on the phone with the support team, honestly, um, if you've done everything else. So. With these two things being uh, turned into icons, we no longer need our node harvesting shapes and we're good to go. We have flattened shapes, no longer cracked, and we're, we're off. We can continue on with our icon library building work, our design system, or just mockups, whatever it is you were working on. I hope this was helpful. If you have other methods for dealing with cracked icons when you go to outline a stroked path that are different from what I showed here, or a riff or a remix of kind of what I did here, I would love a comment about it, especially if you can link to like a Figma community file, another YouTube video. I think it'd be, this is such an annoying problem. It would be really great to um, share. And my intention here is to collect as many examples of how to address this problem as possible. So good luck. Thank you for watching. See you later.